bitches! It's Boy Change on the Cora, and welcome back to Pester Quest. It got updated today, and um, <clears throat> instead of kids, we now have trolls. And I'm not talking about the kind that you see on 4chan. I'm talking about the original beta trolls. And uh, <laughs> I'll just say one is very no very loud and annoying. Well, the other one is very elegant and kind and married to someone we already talked about in the first part as in a cer certain um, seer of light so why don't we just boop ourselves on in here and go ahead and play as you can see we now have two new chapters people like us and I have plenty of friends. So we're going to go with Route 1. And we're just going to hop on into a car cat's route. Confident that your new friends are safely sleeping off a rowdy night full of snacks, video games, and taxidermy, turn your thoughts to dreams. Jade's dream. That fascinating, shining place that feels familiar the way, well, the way a dream does. <clears throat> CrossFit feels like the place you should be right now. You got a brand new zap sense. And it hasn't failed you so far. It's allowed you to, to befriend severally, uh, several emotionally volatile teens in precarious home situations. These powers won't let you down. So you zap to the dream world. Hey, we're back on CrossFit. I'd rather be on Durst. I like Durst more. <clears throat> Turns out you can fly here. Rad! You drift around for a little bit, admiring the glittering towers, waving lazily to all the various dream NPCs, until you come upon a dome with an open window. Inside a troll boy with nubby horns and a silly outfit lies curled up in his dream bed, sleeping soundly. Aww, he looks so peaceful. You imagine this is a very peaceful troll boy. Where have you been? Perhaps it should, it should strike you as strange that you immediately know what this alien's race is, but nah, you don't have time for that. Abruptly, the boy vanishes. Oh crap! You follow him without hesitation. Zip! Luckily, your powers seem oriented to specific people, rather than places. You figure it's because this is a character-driven narrative. Oh, look at that! If you look on the wall to your right, there's a recuper coon. And a poster of Troll Hitch. So that's Troll Will Smith on the wall. <laughs> and then you have the uh, the scythe, the twin scythe that Carcat uses. Oh, that looks so cool. With Trollian over there, and I can see all the different blood colors. That is so neat. <laughs> you find yourself in a dim respite block. There's a bookshelf, but a desk, and clothes hung up on pegs on the wall. But instead of the bed, there's a small tub of green goo. Huh. What? Oh, hi, car cat. You look like you just woke up. <laughs> you're that, you're that, or you look like Gerard Way's troll child. <coughs> the frick! A gravelly voice tinged with mania crashes over you in a furious wave. You reel back from the onslaught. I don't like when people yell at me. I guess I have to yell back for this one. Every evening I wake up to another glorious night of the universe applying its gloves directly to my face in the most hilarious and juvenile way possible. I'm used to this, okay? I'm not saying this is anything new. This is just next frickin' level. Your eyes finally adjust enough to see the same troll boy from the dream world. He appears to have fallen asleep at his husk top. Some crumbs were stuck to his face where it had been pressed onto the desk. He's got a zodiac symbol on his shirt. Whichever one is the side of wave 59. <laughs> nice. It's a, it's a, the sign for cancer. How did you not know what cancer is? Come on. He's a crabby little car cat. <laughs> you know, before I started recording, I was in a real crabby mood. But now, <laughs> just reading this, <laughs> it's making me laugh. And man, is he... He is angry, like way angrier than a normal person. I stayed in this crumbling excuse on a hive, rigged this place with my early warning system, and what's my reward? 
a deformed blue blood teleporting into my respite block like a freaking. You zap out of there because, dang, you don't know what kind of early warning system he has. But whatever predators it's meant to keep away, all you have to do is shout at him. Oh, there's the twin moons! That is so pretty! I love the, the design of the twin moons here. It's so, so soothing. The green moon and the pink moon. Oh, that is so dang pretty. You appear on a nearby hill about 100 yards away from the hive. From the outside, it's large and lean, with square windows and an unnecessary number of balconies. Although, you, who are you to say what's necessary? Maybe this dude really likes balconies. He could probably use the fresh air. A couple of similarly large and lopsided hives scattered the skyline. Huh. Hives. You're not sure how you know how they're called that. But it feels great. Maybe because of the organic insectile tech architecture, maybe like they were grown instead of built. You clearly aren't on Earth anymore. The sky is black and the bushes are purple. And there are two moons. Neither of them is your gold moon, though. You think maybe you should be freaked out by the strange alien land, but nah. You're a seasoned friend venturer by now. Besides, you like it here. It's comfortable. This is a pretty good hill. That's it for a while. Thinking about this hill and its universe and your place is it. Until the sun starts to crest over the distant horizon. Hey! Idiot! The troll boy is leaning outside of his front door. You're sitting on the ground waiting for sunrise. So you're either a jade blood or a moron. And I know the only jade blood who lives outside the caverns, and she's a lot better looking than you. So what the hell are you? Who are you? You're not a troll. There's a substantial gap of grassy hill between the two of you, but you can hear him just fine. He has a talent for projection. You stand up and brush the dirt off your butt. He seems a little less angry, a little less angry now. Uh, zap right over. No point in wasting daylight, or moonlight, whatever, so you can zap on over there. HOLY FRICK! Oh no! It, that's one of his sickles! Oh, dude, did we get hit? A flash of gray and a gleam of metal, bright, shocking pain opens up in the middle of you. The boy stares, eyes round, yellow, and shocked. Your laugh comes out wet. Why are you laughing? You don't know what else to do. You press the hand to the wound in your stomach, trying to hold the blood in with sheer willpower. You tell him you were just trying to save a little time. What? The boy stares down at the weapon in his hand, a viciously hooked blade that he seem it put seemingly out of nowhere. A scythe? No, a sickle. Is this kid a communist? Did communists actually use sickles, or were they just sickle-themed? So many communist facts that you don't know. The boy continues to stare at his sickle. He stares at your fingers. He looks back and forth. His sickle, your fingers, his sickle, your fingers. Or more accurately, the blood on his sickle and your fingers. Did we do it? Oops. He's gaping at the crimson splashes like he's never seen blood before. His mouth moves, but no sound comes out. He hunches over himself like he is the one who has been gutted. You aren't sure what he does after that because suddenly you're on your back and all you can see is the sky. Yep, we did an oopsie. Hey, first oops of the series! No, wait. Second oops of the series. No worry. Let me use a little bit of time power and rewind. <laughs> we're back. So this time we're going to just take our sweet time. You walk leisurely down the hill. The heat from the rising sun washes over your back and you speed up. That sun is bad news, you just know it. Start down the hill. Light leads further across the horizon and your pace gets, just gets a little less leisurely. The troll boy crosses his arms. His arms are rounded in a slouch, like he spends a lot of time making himself smaller. His black painted claws are bitten down. You wave a little awkward hello. He rolls his eyes and grabs it by the arm, gripping surprisingly strong. He tugs you underneath the shell the overhang of a balcony. Okay, Bohol! What were you doing watching me in my dream like some hornless cast posing pervert? I can't even retreat into unconsciousness anymore! Is that it? I won't even slide into the nascent relief of death without an alien stalking me! Did one of my friends put you up to this? Was it Solux? 
Everyone's favorite pastime, make car cats live, and even more constant effervescent crap show. You tell him, car cat, that it's not like that. You don't know anybody named Solux, and you didn't mean to be creepy. You just found him, liked how he looked, and decided to follow him home. Car cat's thick eyebrows creep upward. Hold up. Take like out three bottles of water here, because doing car cat's voice is going to dry my throat out like crazy. Much better. Alright, back to the screaming. <laughs> okay, you know how that sounds, but you really didn't mean it did to be weird. You did it for friendship. You crave it, like a mineral. Wow, very normal, Mr. Magic. Oh, but you are magic. Okay, maybe not you specifically, but you don't want to brag. But you can do some pretty magic stuff. Crockett looks incredibly dubious. More so than Rose had who you might have described as politely incredulous. You can start explaining to him all that wild stuff that Jade told you about, games and destiny and such things, but you can't really imagine what any of that has to do with this grumpy alien boy. What are the chances? You tell him you can prove it. You can bring him to visit one of his friends. You're so awesome at bringing friends together. You could visit Solik, was it? Carcat makes a noise like a tea kettle being punched. Hell no! That nook butter would sub-immolate if I interrupted his coding! You wonder if that's a euphemism. Maybe Carcat just likes scare quotes. I don't have the energy to grump that his freaking deformed bulges today! <laughs> Freaky deformed bulges? Wait, was that plural? A bulge is like coded for a troll's down bit? Maybe he does have children? Cause Solix is all about like duality? I don't even know anymore. I'm trying not to imagine it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, then where do you want to go? Does he have any more friends? I wouldn't call him a friend exactly. More like an endless burden I've been cursed with by the slithering eldritch gods of the outer regions. I suppose the outer reaches, sorry. Doing his voice is like really hard. If I didn't occasionally check up on him, he'd space out so far he'd hit hard vacuum. How do we do this? Hmm. You're actually not quite sure. Do you don't want to backpedal and suggest to this cool angry troll boy you don't know what you're doing? <sighs> do I just his hand kind of hovers near yours. Hold on. You could hold hands, but you don't want to be too forward. You also, you also just hold him under the armpits. Hey, he's not that short. I mean, if Carcat was a real person, he'd probably come up to my chest. I'm five foot eight. That would probably be about five foot five, five four. I don't know. <sighs> You think holding me under the armpits is less weird than holding frond stumps? Uh, yeah. Sort of. Carcat puts an awkward hand on your elbow. Then he frowns and pushes up your sleeve, laying three fingers against your bare arm. You good, dude? Uh, yeah. Sorry. I'm just kind of warm. Thank you. You tell Carcat that he is very warm, too. Let's just get this over with. Try to aim for just outside his hide. His loose is, is, isn't around. It's usually too stony to even notice if the roof came down. Oh, he's talking about Gamzee! <gasps> Are we gonna meet Gamzee? I really wanna meet Gamzee. I mean, sure, he's dead in the epilogues, but those are those are non-canonical. They have been proven to be non-canonical. Which means Gamzee is still alive. Somewhat. Even though in the epilogues... Sorry if anyone's not read the epilogues yet. He is dead because of asphyxiation, which is ironic because that's how he killed a certain blue blood. <sighs> but I don't want to startle him. Cool, here goes. He said that some are pitch black and immediately blunder right into car cat. Oh my god! Could you keep it together for a single freaking glance, Nugget? You aren't in Carcat's hive anymore. You appear to be in the void. 
cool. The what? Let go of me. You tell Car Cat that he's actually the one still holding on to you. He makes the eerie noise through his nostrils and releases you from his clammy grasp. He moves away from you and clads into what sounds like 17 mobs all banging into each other and clattering to the ground. God! Freaking! Something smashes. Slurry guzzling! A shower of little noises is like marble over hardwood. What even is that? <laughs> Like me when I'm trying to make sense of my Twitter feed. <laughs> oh, hello. Yep, we're definitely in Gamsey's hive because I can see a pie on the wall, the troll version of an ICP poster on the wall. It's disgusting in here, and it looks like he has not cleaned his hive in 12 sweeps. Plus, there's a unicycle over there and a bunch of horns. A light finally pops on above you. You appear to be in an alien broom closet with, like, alien cleaning supplies. Yes. One ball just says Clan written on it in permanent marker. Who knows Carcat if he meant to transport the two of you into a closet? A bucket rattles as he kicks it. He yelps and ju jumps backward onto your foot. Yeah, troll plus bucket equals... Do 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 Can you imagine what I'm thinking there? Um... Hot dog through a donut? Um. Yeah, don't get any lewd thoughts right now. I keep it clean. <clears throat> what the frick? Makara, you bottom fiend butthole! You per your personal habits are almost as, as disgusting as your pan writing purple words. Why is your paling equipment mixed in with your scrub poles? Yeah, um. For, do for those who are not a homestuck, reader. Let me, um, fill you in. Pails are what trolls use to collect the stuff that comes out of their down bit, whether in a red or a black quadrant, which is either mate's brick or kismessic. Which is either you're in a love relationship or a hate relationship. And drones come by on a periodic basis to pick up buckets. That way they could take them to the mother grub who devours this disgusting slurry. And eventually troll babies pop out in the form of grubs. And from then they pupate, turn to actual troll kids like Carcat here, and they pick and then Eleusis picks them as like a parent. And that is the troll reproductive cycle, for those who don't know. And I almost made myself throw up. Because <laughs> I can only imagine a gigantic moth-like creature. Oh god! Just imagining it making me want to throw up. And I haven't even eaten today yet. Oh. Oh, okay. Back to the clean part of what you're doing here, Cora. Calm down. <clears throat> Did you figure no nobody would notice? Surprise, Nook Sucker, I noticed. What in the hell? Crockett breaks off, and after a moment, you realize why. Heavy footsteps shuffle closer. Somebody has heard the absolute rumpus tantrum that Carcat's picking up. Oh, hey, hold up, my brother. I'm hearing something in the scrub cubby. Those squeak beats what all got itself trapped. The door opens a crack. Carcat grabs your arm again. Oh, frick! A shadow looms on the wall. Wild hair and tall horns. Oh, frick me. Carcat squeezes your arm so hard it hurts. Oh, frick, oh, frick, oh, frick, oh, frick, 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 The door opens a little wider and you feel wetness on your arm where Carcat's claws have drawn blood. The door creaks and you panic. <sighs> Whoopsie! Well, hey, we got to hear we got to hear Gamzy. <coughs> you both crash down to the floor together in Carcat's respite block. Who gets little horns jabby in the side? What the frick was that for? Why'd you do that? 
because Carcat was freaking the frick out, and you were worried the two of you were in danger, and there was some menacing beehole on saying creepy stuff outside the closet door? It's a, that is a total, that is a complete mischaracterization of the scenario, and I'm totally disgusted you even bring it up. It's not a mischaracterization. He was totally losing it. Look, he was clinging on to you so hard he even drew blood. You showed him your clawed up arm. Carcat's reaction is immediate and overblown, which you are beginning to gather isn't out of character for him. He starts vigorously examining himself. He seems to be, he appears to be checking for injuries. No, you insist he's not the one bleeding. You are. He's so covered up in jeans and sweater that you have no idea how to even get cut in the first place. Wait, this is your blood? Uh, yeah, what's the big deal? Besides the fact that he just totally scratched the crap out of you. You want to let it slide, though, for friendship reasons. Might this just be the way he greets people? It's like, kind of freaked up. Maybe you should just leave. <laughs> also, for those who are not familiar with Homestuck blood terminology, Carcat is a mutant blood. He has candy red blood like a human. For some odd reason. Because in Homestuck you have blood cast. Which is basically from the rest reds which live about 30 years to the mostly immortal fuchsia bloods. So they live for over 200 years and more. And the higher up in the cast you are, the more likely you're going to live a very long time. Karkat here is a mutant blood, meaning he has a genetic mutation in which his blood is candy red like a human. And his lifespan is somewhat unknown because he kind of falls in between Aradia and Tavros that are that are like the low bloods. But yeah, it's a little confusing. <clears throat> Wait, what? Now you're just gonna zap the frick out of here like nothing happened? You can't go out there. It, it isn't safe. Not for people like Carcat pulls himself warily to his feet. Still looking at you like you're a bomb that might go off if he steps wrong. Slowly he extends his own palm. He draws a claw across it. Crimson blood beads up and drips to the floor. It isn't safe for people like us. Clearly something is happening here. And you it's probably a really deep and affecting moment, but you're just not sure what you're supposed to do. You bleed. You bleed. Both of you bleed. Sweet! Blood friends! You can frick with that. How did you get a Cerulean's hoodie? Did you, did you back yourself on a high blood Moira? Now that you have established that the two of you do indeed both have blood, Carcat seems to have warmed up to you a lot. Which is actually hard because he is very much a nubby McShout. He even offers you something called grub juice. Which it, which you're pretty sure is just coke. Just except not as sweet. It's almost a little salty. You take tiny plate sips and then pour it into a dead plant as soon as Carcat turns his back. Tell him that you aren't actually sure where you got the sweatshirt. You were just wearing it when you woke up? You don't even remember where that was. You just knew that you were standing in front of John's house. And you were wearing this hoodie and you knew it was important. But not why it's important. Possibly because it keeps you from being naked. You didn't realize it belonged to a cerulean whatever that is. Carcat is looking at you like you aren't making much sense, which is fair because you really aren't making that much sense. So you're a mutant blood alien with amnesia that, that can also teleport. Yep. Oh, and you can time travel too. Don't push it. Carcat sits down at his desk and hits the space bar on his keyboard. We could probably figure out whose cast sign that is. Well, not as specifically unless you got some incredibly unlikely well honed husk top skills. You got no husk top skills, honed or otherwise. Yeah, I'm not frickin' surprised. Here, just give me a second. Don't break any of my crap. You take a glance around the room, keeping your arms behind your back so to make absolutely sure you don't break any of the stuff. This room is surprisingly tidy for someone who as scattered as car cat, mostly just weapons and movie posters. It all has the air of someone who doesn't plan to live in a place for very long. It feels Temporary. Carcat is tapping furiously with his mouth pulled into a little frown. 
That's a default, it appears. Every so often, though, he'll throw glasses at the cuts on your arm. He really is hung up on your blood. Good news, Captor. Tonight is your lucky night. Finally, you get a chance to put your money where your dribbling, snaggletooth flap is. I need you to do something for me. KK, if this is something. If this is more whining about the team leader, I don't mind here. Just don't have the qualities necessary for this sort of scenario. If it does here to start some sort of flap fight for for regular, you should probably go frick yourself. Cause, because I got actual work I need to do tonight. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my god, who gives a frick about a game of Roddy that dug out of a hole in the ground? And what actual work? Like I actually believe that for a second. You mean the actual work of touching yourself while sobbing in your into your recuper coon? Yeah, it's hilarious, but we can skip the floor play just for one time in our lives. A lot of it's gonna happen is you two saying something you regret, and then crip typing of whether or not we're still friends. Okay, first of all, frick you! I don't have the time for any of your pathetic ferns ducking me into a carton of weak sauce. There's actual real serious stuff going down. Well, now we've wasted like two minutes. Telling each other how busy we are. What the frick do you want? I need you to check something in the Imperial database for me. Cast records. And I want you to do it without asking me why I need it. Deal? Wait. Uh, what the what the frick, KK? Absolutely no deal. You didn't even try to make a deal. You just told me to do something incredibly illegal and dangerous. Why do you need cast records? You think ancestors? You think ancestors are bullshit? <laughs> I'm trying to do that, like, traditional lisp for Solix. <laughs> it's just trying to make me laugh. <clears throat> Ancestors are bullcrap! Fake night dream nonsense for hate- For kids who hate themselves and want to experience a connection to be something better than they are. Face the facts, bulgeweeds! There's no way any of us are descended from anybody that matters. Then why the hell do you want me to, to risk getting called for the record if it's just a book of bullshit that doesn't matter? I might have a fast list, but I'm not suicidal. So either tell me what crawl up your nook and lay eggs in there, or let me get back to work. Okay, fine. I'm only telling you this because we're friends and I trust you. There's this person in my hive. Person? Yeah, they aren't a troll, but they aren't a drone either. I guess they're an alien. But they have a cerulean sign and we're trying to figure out where it came from. Wait, they aren't the troll, but they're, they're a cerulean? Sorry, KK, I'm trying to wrap my pen around this. I'm pretty sure you're just tricking with me. Oh my god, could you just run this? Give me a second. Okay, nobody has had the sign or cast name in a while. Ask your new alien friend if they know the name Adlog. <gasps> oh my god! That's right! In this Alternia, it's different than the Alternia we went through in Hive Swap! Because Adlog was the last name of that hacker. The really cool, actually good looking hacker dude that had like the almost Tavros like horns. And all the piercings, and he was like the Rami Malek of Alternia. <clears throat> hey, do you know? Oh, what the frick! You step back from where you've been reading over Karkat's shoulder. He couldn't resist, he was just getting so heated and mad, banging on the keyboard, just making real weird little growly noises. You think you can just. Karkat goes absolutely silent. He's rigid. If he had been a cat, his hair would be standing straight up. You ask him what's wrong and he shushes you so loudly you almost fall over from shock. You strain and in the distance you can hear a strange, staticky whirring. Suddenly Karkat explodes into motion, grabbing your arm and pulling you out of his respite block and down the stairs. In the living room he tugs a thick black blanket from off the back of the couch and pulls up the rug in the center of the room. Beneath it is a trap door. What the crap is- Be quiet! His movements are quick and panicky, but also methodical. His jaw is set and his eyes are as hard as he unbolts the trap door. He gives it a hard yank to loosen it and props it open. Beneath it is a rectangular pit in the foundations of the house. 
the size and shape of a shallow grave. If this is the first time he's done this, he does even the tent. So far, Crockett has struck you as a little bit ridiculous, but now there's something fierce burning in him, something angry and distilled. Sound comes again, both of the time, and you see a hulking shadow over the, at the window, huge and menacing and armored. It's an imperial drone. <laughs> now he looks like the signless. <laughs> Crockett yanks you down into the pit with him and wraps the two of you in the blanket. And he closes the trap door and you are plunged into a darkness so absolute it's like you've stopped existing. What the hell is going on? A drone. Crockett's face is squished against your shoulder. The fear in his voice shudders you to your bones. It's just a routine check. We should be fine down here. My, my loose has dug this. It, it hides the temperature. The temperature? Of me. Of us. Of our mutation. You don't understand, but that doesn't stop you from being afraid. Impossibly heavy footsteps land on the ground above you. Harkat trembles. God, you have to do something. Yeah, because of, uh, her imperious condescension, who still is alive in this timeline, she wants all mutants cold. Basically, eradicated. Because they think, or she thinks, that if you have a mutant blood type, like lime green or candy red, you're more or less going to ruin the troll species. So she's kind of like, and I really don't want to get demonetized once I get monetized for this. She is C Hitler. That's all she is, okay? I said it. Let's wait it out. We'll be fine. Carcat mutters it to himself again and again. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. This always works. There's no reason to. Oh, crap. A rusty grating screech as the trapdoor's wrench off its hinges. Light pours in. Two giant metal hands reach into the hole and pluck the both of you out. Carcat wiggles and bites like a cat trying to get free. You don't have a chance. The drone tosses you bodily out of the way. Your head hits the wall and everything goes a little strange and streaky after that. When you come back to yourself, you are outside in the blazing morning heat with Carcat crouched over you. Did, did the two of you escape? Yeah. His voice is hollow. There's crimson blood smeared on his sweater and up to his chin. When you realize it must have come from the reopened cuts on your arm, Carcat must have carried you out of the hive. The hive. Behind you, Carcat's house is in flames. The heat of the fire combines with the heat of the sun until it feels like the two of you are standing on the edge of hell. Oh my god, did the drone do that? No. My Lucis did. I told you I have early warning system. He gave me a chance to get out before triggering it. Is he... Is he okay? Karka gives you a look of utter disgust. He gestures toward the burning hive. I very freaking much doubt it. Okay, okay, but the drone is dead, right? So he's safe. Karka releases a creaky, wheezing sound that takes you a second to realize it's a laugh. God, you really are an alien. Where are you even from? Sounds so relaxing. That isn't the only drone, you freaking nature! It's seen on my sign! It's heard in my voice! I'm on record as coal on sight! There's absolutely nowhere for me to go! Crap, okay, well what about his friends? You really don't think Carcat is in any sort of state to make decisions, so you make an executive one for both of you. Also, it's hot as crap out here, and your delicate skin is already starting to burn. What did that friend's name been? You take Karkat's hand because the two of you are beyond holding each other under the armpit at this point. You appear in a residual, residential, I don't know what residual popped up as, uh, residential street in the city, and for a second you must have traveled in time as well because it's night again suddenly. But then you look up and see the strange purple-blue glimmer in the sky. It's still day, but there's some sort of atmospheric shield between the killer sun and the city. You wonder why there isn't one over where Carcat lives. Maybe it's too far out and sticks. Carcat yanks his hand out of yours. He's still holding the blanket and he wraps the two of you in, staring around in nervous little ticks. He looks even more scared than he had back in his bedroom. Clearly he doesn't get out much. Frick! A low chime rings out through the empty street. Carcat pulls his palm husk out of his pocket and looks at it like he can't remember what it is. 
Like everything normal had been wiped away, and all that remains is the frozen horror in his eyes. Kiki, what a trick. I just thought you didn't come up on the feed. What'd you do, you frickin' idiot? You're gonna be a fresh accuser now. You can't just start howling up on the call list. I didn't do anything! Socks! I... And there's some stuff about me you don't know! Okay, what the hell? <clears throat> okay, well, first of all, I'm right outside your hive stem. What? What are you talking about? Is this that mutant stuff? Who gives a crap about that? He's eating up too. He says that she can take their blood colors through the screen, which is all kind of freaky. How does that even work? The screens aren't scratch and sniff. How the frick? It doesn't matter. Wow. I do not give a crap about any of Terezi's cackling bullcrap right now. Everything is frick forever. <sighs> As if in agreement, a familiar crackling whirr comes up somewhere close by. You and Carcat looked at each other in almost comedic distress. I... I have to go! Just come up here, okay? We'll figure this crap out. No, absolutely freaking not! Oh my god! You utter imbecile! You think your little... You think your little pan sparks would do anything against a calling drone? You know... I know you have a death wish, but I'm not going to assist you in hysterical crap fit suicide! You don't know anything about me or my death wish, okay? Come up there. No! Don't make me tell you how much I hate you. Carcat throws his palm at the pavement, shattering the screen. Tears drip off his jaw in blurry streaks of red. Get me out of here! And don't you dare ask me what's wrong! You don't. You get him out of there. To all over. Locale to locale. You take a grand tour of Alternia, a place you shouldn't know the name of, but you do. <laughs> And everywhere you go, oh, I love this area. <laughs> you hear that telltale grinding whir. Carcat was right. Wherever he goes, the drones follow. After a certain point, it just becomes routine. You teleport to a lo random location, and the two of you just sort of loaf around until you hear the sound of the distance. By the time the sun starts to set, you are both exhausted and must have zapped all over the planet. You find yourself back on the grassy field, most likely somewhere near Carcat's demolished hive. Smoke hangs fetid in the evening air. Carcat's eyes are dull, his hair tangled in massive curls that look like twisted wire. I figured out why the frickin' thing didn't work. What thing? Shakes the blanket which he's been holding on to all day, the last remnant of what is most likely, by now, just a smoking rack. With two mutants in there, we were too warm. Years of perfecting my hiding like an oink beast from the slaughter's technique. And it's all decimated by some clueless a hole in a hoodie. Just car cat out of here having a normal one! Get freaked up the way shoot by the inexorable march of fate in the universe! I meet someone with the same disgusting deformity as me, and they immediately ruin my life! This is why I don't let people into my hive! Car cat. There's so much hatred wrapped up in his voice and in his words, you don't think it's hatred for you. You ask him what you can do. You want to fix this. I think you've done enough. Carcat bumbles himself in the, up in the blanket, even though it isn't cold. He turns away. Oh. Then we'd better scatter. Uh. Hey, Pandora, can you do me a solid? Alright, we better flee. So you're a pretty tolerant kind of dude. You're generally down for whatever, but lying in a shallow grave while a troll boy digs his nubby little horns into your ribs, and a mechanical monster stomps around upstairs, that's kind of a lot, even for you. So you really can do the only thing your responsible friend can. You get, the fr you get your friend out of the frick out of Dodge. <clears throat> <gasps> Whoa! We're back with Jade and John! Not Jade. John and Dave! Oh, nice! <clears throat> it was really cool of Jade to have us all over. It felt like a birthday present, kind of. Especially since all my other presents got lost in the mail. Actually, the only one that didn't get lost was a little monstrous poser, poser my dad got me. He gave it to me a week early. Almost like he knew that something weird was going to happen to the rest of my gifts.
Oh, come on, OBS. Quit being a butt. <clears throat> sure, yeah. Happy for you, dude. Go with your dad got your unbelievably crappy crap. See if we got thrown in literal garbage where frankly it belongs. Why are you put what's name part of our valu valuable word count babbling about your freaking little monster poster? Who actually cares? I don't know. I just figured some people may might want to know about it. <laughs> Black. Okay. <clears throat> Dave and John are propped up on the futon, gaming the only way only bros can game. I.e. with several bags of chips and a mostly empty two liter ball of Mountain Dew on the couch between them. Yeah, dogs, there's room for snacks for Jesus and snacks. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a pagan, so I follow Gaia. <laughs> hey, Mr. Million! You wave hello and try to catch your breath. You're a little unbalanced from the brutal shift between being buried alive to a chill Texas day just a couple of guys being dudes. Wait, how did they even get back from Jade's? Alright, yeah. Turns out, turns out her dog can teleport. Oh, right, who knew? I don't think Beck can time travel, though. So don't worry, you aren't gonna be out of a job or anything. And I'm probably gonna ask you to zap me back to my place before my dad realizes I've been gone this long. I don't think he can call the cops on you, but I just want him to be on the safe side. Oh, like, who the frick is that? And is he like... Okay. Oh yeah, Car Cat! He's currently wrapped up on the ground with the blanket still wrapped around him. He's breathing very heavily and sort of clutching at the carpet. <sighs> he leaned down to make sure he's cool while telling Dave and John that he's an alien from another planet. He figured he'd bring him here since crap got a little too hot back in alien land. Oh. Dope, I guess. <clears throat> Hey, dude. Wait. He's an alien? Like, like, <clears throat> like a real alien? Yeah, John, Jesus Christ. Look, look, he's got little horns. Yeah, I can see that, but come on, aliens? Oh, so this is where you draw the line? Our friend living alone on, on an island with nothing but a magical dog and text family grandpa who can stuff herself? Isn't that, isn't where you draw it? A teleporting fake mailman in a hoodie who just wants to be bros and then where you draw it? I guess you have a point. All well, this stuff feels so normal now. But I guess in theory you could bring us to visit the alien planet. Maybe. Not that there's anything I'd actually want to do. The place is probably stank AF. He'd never catch me in space. Space is the place. Well, damn, right there now. You'll have a good stride of freestyle any day of the week, but this isn't Dave's route, so you return your focus back to... Oh, holy frick, where'd he go? Oh yeah, the little dude just scurried out the door. Probably should have mentioned that. Dang it! You just brought Karkat to Earth and you've already lost him, some friend you are! <clears throat> He's that down to the ground floor of the apartment building? Nothing. He's up to the, the stairwell and look up. and look up. Nothing. No little alien boy with a blanket. Crap. Dang it. Remember the time you met Dave, you zap up to the roof. You find Carcat standing silhouetted against the turgid Texas sky. Shimmers of heat the haze making him look strangely artificial. Shading his eyes and staring up at the sun. Hey, dude, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for the advice. I'm way too stupid to not know to look not, not to look directly into a burning ball of fire. The pain is intense and searing, but I'm just a dumb freaking animal. By the way, the sun is pathetic. Well, this is another planet and another sun. Yes, thank you! <sighs> he drops his hand and turns back to you. There are still cobwebs in his hair from the crawl space. Is this where you're from? You think so? Maybe? You don't remember very much about yourself. But you seem to know much more about Earth than you do about Alternia. You know exactly. You don't remember very much about that place at all. Oh, except that it's called Alternia, apparently. This all feels... I don't know. Wrong? Or really just freaking weird? You zapped in and dragged me out of my hive to an alien planet where the sun isn't hot enough to burn. Well, it definitely is hot enough to burn, it just takes a little longer. Shut up, I wasn't finished. Before, I, before you showed up, Solix was telling me about this game where, that one of his friends found, 
And we were all supposed to play together, and I don't know. Some stuff would have happened. I don't know why it feels like it matters. I just feel like... It just, it's hard to describe. <laughs> Blackened out. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> you and Carcat both jump. Dave has ninjaed upstairs and casually against, at least casually against the brick wall. How long has he been standing there? Where's John? Oh, he just disappeared. Wait, what? Yeah, it's weird. The swirl, swirling void wormhole just opened up in the TV and sucked him right in. <clears throat> what? Oh, I'm freaking with you. John's in the bathroom. But I had you for a second, didn't I? That absolutely sounds like something that, that could happen these past couple days. Oh yeah, hilarious. He sure got you. Also, you're pretty sure that the scene moved up here so you could talk to Carcat without Dave coming in and making all of this about him again. <sighs> Dave adjusts his shades. Man, that is an extremely weird thing to say. Yeah, horny dude. I mean, uh, Kyle Horns. Are you talking to me? We're all supposed to play a game too. Yeah, there's a group or some crap. Right! Jade told you about a game! A game that's supposed to change everything. That sort of crap that makes me get this feeling you know more about what's going on than you're telling us. <clears throat> you don't! You swear you don't! You have no idea what any of this is happening, or maybe not happening? Make sure some stuff you, you seem to know, but not until you absolutely have to. You're just sure that it's very important that you brought Carcat here. Why? How the frick do I have anything to do with these horrorless freaks? Hey, easy there. Stand right here, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a pretty good point now that I think about it. He said it's important for you to bring here, like, here specifically. My apartment. Yeah. Why? You aren't sure. You just have this intense feeling that it's imperative that these two of them are friends. Alright. Weird, but alright. Great, dude. You ever play any Tony Hawk? <clears throat> Woo! Finally got it right! And look at Car Cat. He looks so bored. <laughs> look at me right there holding the Xbox controller. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, finally I can stop screaming like a complete dingus. But yeah, that was Car Cat's route. <laughs> And even though we screwed up a couple times, I'm just glad we finally got to see at least two of his endings. And um, the next one we're going to be doing is with Kanaya, my favorite uh, Jade Blood, because at least with her I can talk more elegantly and I don't have to shout. Unless she gets angry. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to get on out of here. I'm going to get ready for Kanaya's route. I need some food and I need some water and I need to relax. So, I'm going to get on out of here. Y'all know what to do. Hit that like button with a big old bibbity bobbity boop. And I'll see you all in the next one. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends. Ugh, my throat's going to be killing me after I'm done editing this.